Parshas Koirach, Tovshin Pei Dalet. And as we learn through the Parshas Hashavua of the past couple of weeks, I mean, Parshas Koirach, we know almost every year from Baruch Hashem, this is the 15th year that we're saying the Shiurim on the Parshas in Siva Shalom, almost every single year we speak about the Machloikis that was caused by Koirach, the ramifications of Machloikis, what Machloikis is, how terrible it is, how it breaks up Klai Yisrael, breaks up families, breaks up friendships, and really, anybody who learns through Sifri Musa, Chafetz Chaim, any of those things, will see right away that one of the worst things a person can do, ever, one of the worst things you can do in your life is to get near, to get involved in a Machloikis, and really that's what happened and now a Parsha this week. But if you look at the last few weeks of the Parsha Shavua, something really stands out from each Parsha. And it seems that every single week there's another Avera, another problem, another thing that Klai Yisrael is being punished, and something that Kaviachal upsets Hashem, if we could say, that Hashem gets upset, but in whatever way, the Torah is letting us know that they got punished and people died and there was a plague and there were so many different things that happened and it seems like it's happening every single week. Parshas Baal Oischa, just a couple of weeks ago, we had the Misoyimim, the Misavim, what, was they, what did they complain about? They complained about the fact they had a lack of food that they said, even though we all know they had mun, they had whatever they needed, it tasted like whatever they needed. They came to Toyamel Thursday night. They didn't have to have the same thing. Uh, every week you could have, one week you could taste like pastrami, the next week it's cholent, next week it's whatever you want. But yet they complained that no, we missed the food from its Ryan. We don't have enough food. Then there was the Misavim, the people that complained about the variety of food, there wasn't enough variety, and Hashem punished them, and many, many of them died. That was in Parshish Baal Yisra. Then last week, as we know, we spoke about the episode of the Miraglim. The Miraglim went, and they spoke Lashon Hara about Eretz Yisrael. And we went into it last week, and we spoke a little bit about the fact that they didn't even say it about people. They spoke about a land, but they spoke about Hashem's land. They spoke about Hashem's Eretz Yisrael. They spoke about a place that Hashem had told them, go and I'll take care of you and everything's going to be good. And they said Lashon Hara about Eretz Yisrael and we know how that turned out. We know that an entire generation, almost the entire generation was wiped out and none of them were Zaycha to go into Eretz Yisrael besides Kalei Yeshua Benun and a few others, right? But that did not turn out very well either. So that's the past two weeks. And then now we come to this week. And this week we have, once again, we have another problem. We have the Machloikis of Koirah. So what's going on here? It seems the Torah is definitely trying to deliver us some message of every week and every parsha, something is going wrong and Klai Yisrael is being punished. It's not for no reason. There must be a lesson that we have to learn. So the Siva Sholem tells us that all these things over the past few weeks and all the parashiyos, it refers to a Mishnah in Perkei Avos. Mishnah Perkei Avos, Perk Dalet, this week's Perkei Avos coming up, and most of us know this Mishnah, that there are three things, Hakina, the Hataiva, the Hakavoy, Moitzin Esa Adam in Olam. That Kina, jealousy, Taiva, we know what Taiva is, and Kavoy, someone who's constantly in a pursuit of honor. He wants more honor for himself. It's all about himself. So these three things the Mishnah tells us, and anyone who thinks about it really understands why it's, it, these are things that, right, you're, you're chasing after Kavoy, you're chasing after someone else's possessions, you're chasing after things that you really shouldn't have, a kinah, a taiva, kavoy, it's not a life, the life you're living is not a life. It removes a person, it takes a person out of the world 
that you're supposed to be living in. And the Mepharshim tell us why is Dafka, why Dafka these three things? What's the common denominator of Kina, Taiba, and Kavoy? So the Sivashalom brings, the Mepharshim tell us that these three things are not only deeds, they're also in Machshava. No, you don't have to do anything. To be jealous of somebody, to want Kavoy, the person could drive themselves into the ground without ever having lifted a hand. Without doing a misa, without picking up your hands to do something, a person could have push it, a miserable life. But if someone is jealous of something that someone else has, if someone has a type of something that they really shouldn't get or they can't get, or kavoy, it bothers you when anybody else has kavoy, you think that they are detracting from what you have. So it's, it could mamish the entire thing could be in machshava. It's not just in a deed of something that you do. But what is it that makes these things of machshava so bad? Why? What's so bad about these things? So I'm not having the best life in the world. What's so bad? So the Shalom explains, and he says, to explain that Mishnah in Perkei Ovois, we could bring you another interesting Mishnah from Perkei Ovois, Perkei We learned it a couple of weeks ago. Shimon HaTzadik Oimer, Shimon HaTzadik says, Al Shloisha Devarim Oilam Oime. Before we told you things that get you out of this world, now the Mishnah in Paragalaf, before we tell you what drives you out of the world, we're going to tell you what the world stands on. The world stands on Al Atoira, Be'al Ho'avoida, Ba'al Gemilus Chasodim. Al Atoira, we know the world stands on the Torah. On leaving our Torah, on keeping the Torah, on following the ways of the Torah, the Al Avoida, which today would be davening, serving Hashem, the Al Gemilus Chasodim, and Al Gemilus Chasodim, things that you do for other people. Right here, we're sitting in a building that's full of Gemilus Chasodim, the Chesed that comes out of Bikur Cholim every week. So you're hanging around the right people. Al Torah, Al Avoida, Al Gemilus Chasodim. These three things, the world stands on that. And he says something a little bit deep, a little Kabbalistic. He says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world as we know, yesh me'ayim. There was nothing here, right? First possible liberations, v'aretoy s'asoyu, v'voyu, v'choy shechel p'nei. So there's nothing. There was nothingness in the world. And Hashem created the world, yesh me'ayim. And the, the, it's brought down in Kabbalah that the tachlis, the purpose of us in this world is to bring the world back to its source. To bring it back to its original state of ayin. Every person, not Chatz Vashon, to say that what Akash Baruch Hu does, or what Akash Baruch Hu created is ayin. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that a person is supposed to make themselves into ayin. You're supposed to understand that compared to anything that Akash Baruch Hu does or is, that we are nothing. A person has to go back to that place of ayin to be mevatel ourselves totally to Hashem. And Torah and Avoidah are, and Gemilus Chasodim, these are the three things that, are, that the world stands on in that regard. Those are the three best ways for a person to bring himself back to that level of ayin where we are nothing. Because Chazal tell us, we know, Chazal tell us about the Torah, and we've learned it a few times in Parshat Chukas coming up. Next week, Chazal tell us about the Torah, that the Torah is only miskayin by one who is mimis atzmayolel. To be mevakal yourself, to work on Torah so hard, to keep putting more and more effort where, quote, you're sort of killing yourself for the Torah, to give yourself over totally to the Torah, to make yourself ayin. So Torah is one way to get back to that. And Avoida, we know the mitzvah, the Ahaptas, Hashem Alekecha, Bechol Levavacha, Ubechol Nafshecha, Ubechol Meardecha, with all your heart, with all your nefesh, with all your possessions and your belongings, Everything that you have, all that belongs to Hashem. You're you're mevatel yourself to that. And Gmilus Chasodim, we know that's the easier one of all three to understand. By Gmilus Chasodim, that's also bitul When a person sees 
you, the, your, when a person sees their possessions as their own, you're going against what Hashem wants from this world. Nothing in this world belongs to any of us. Everything belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So when a person is goyim al chesed, and he does chesed, you're not doing it, you're giving it, you're giving it to the other person. You're giving back to Hashem because it has nothing to do with you. It doesn't belong to you. You're giving to others because it really doesn't belong to you. So in all three of these ways, you're being mevatel yourself. So if a person is mevatel themselves, he understands that everything belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm doing chesed, I'm giving tzedakah, I'm doing all these things. I'm really giving what belongs to Hashem. I'm not giving anything away that is mine. And the, to and the Mishnah tells us that the world stands on those three things because those three things are the most powerful ways of bringing ourselves back to the roots and the tachlis of where nothing in the world is nothing here except HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're being revatal ourselves totally to Hashem. And the opposite is true of Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy. Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy that remove a person from this world in all three of those things we're saying that the world is about us. Kino, you see something by someone else, what do you mean it's not for him? It's for me. You see someone else become something instead of working on yourself. You want to knock the other person down because you're afraid that that person takes away that which is yours. Kavoy, the same thing. You're worried about someone else being something because you think it takes away from you. So on one hand we have Torah, Avoyga, and Gemils Chasodim, and on the other hand we have the Mishnah of Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy that remove a person from this world. The Chasid Yaivet is brought down here in the Siva Shalom says that when the Mishnah says that it's Moitzi Yasa Adam Min HaOilam, notice that it's not being specific. It's saying Min HaOilam, which means that when a person has Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy, you lose both worlds. You lose Oilam Hazeh, and you lose Oilam Haba also. Min HaOilam, whatever we call Oilam, which is Oilam Hazeh, and Oilam Haba. And now Oilam Hazeh, we understand because a person who's busy with Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy the whole day, Pashat has a miserable life on this world. You're never happy. You can't be happy. You go to sleep unhappy, you wake up unhappy, you walk around your day as a down and depressed and angry person. So we understand that you don't have. But when a person chases all these things, when a person chases all these things, you're losing out on your Olam Habo also. Because you're not able to be Mekayim, the Torah, the Avoida, and the Gmils Chasodim. A person is punished in Olam Habo for being that way. And Olam Hazeh. So now let's go back to our question and what we mentioned at the beginning of this year, the misoyninim, the misoyninim, the people who wanted more food, they wanted food of taiva. That was taiva. The misoyninim who wanted food, that was taiva in our Mishnah. And in Parsha Shalach, the miraglim, that was kavoy. Some of Farshim say that the miraglim, why did they speak negatively of Eretz Yisrael? Because they were afraid when they got to Eretz Yisrael that they would lose their position. They would lose their jobs. So they spoke negatively about, about Eretz Yisrael, so they should actually have to stay in the Midbar. So we know Taiva, and that was Kavoy. They thought they would be out of a job. And Koirach this week, of course, that was the ultimate Kima. Koirach was jealous. Koirach wanted that which belonged to Aaron HaKoyet. Koirach wanted it all for himself. In Parshas Baha'aloyscha, Shalach and Koirach, Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy. And that's the lesson we need to learn. Which way are we going to go? Are we going to go the way of Kina, Taiva, and Kavoy? Or are we going to live by the purpose of this world of Torah, Avoida, and Mils Chasadim, which bring us back to the purpose of the world? Hashem created Yesh Me'ayim. And it's our job to understand that the only Yesh is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the Ayin, everything else is us. Let's learn that lesson of Torah. Run far, far away from Achleikis to be friendly, to be nice, to be goyim al chesed, do everything we can for other people, have Torah, Avoida, and Yemil's chasadim, and if we do that, we'll be living life the right way.